Hey friends, welcome back to Hey Pastor, Where's God? I'm Pastor Glenn Poplowski. Big topic here and a big question. Can you command God to do things? Can you demand it? Can you say, Lord, your word says it, and therefore you must do it? Is that legal? Is it biblical? Many people are looking for this, and that's one of the questions that came across my desk. Can we, can we actually command God and get away with it without getting struck by lightning? Let's look at that. God is talking, and he is speaking to Isaiah about a man named Cyrus in the book of Isaiah, and we're going to start off with chapter 45, verse 1. And when we go through this, I've got a number of different things written down. You can command God, friends. You can command him. And there is a way to do it, and God lays the line down specifically. He gives us specific instructions on when to do it and how to do it. You don't just go... Harry Carey, Helter Skelter out there, just, God, you must do this because I need a pink Cadillac because I'm going to sell Mary Kay Cosmetics and it better be in my driveway by tomorrow morning because I command it and you tell me that you'll give me the desires of my heart, blah, blah, blah. That is not biblical. Let's find out biblically what the Word of God says and how we are supposed to stand before the Lord and bring our petitions. And God is very enlightened when we do it the right way. And he is delighted to come before us as we come before him. And we present our case. This is how you have to do it, friends. It's not commanding God to get your way before an awesome creator, but it is demanding that Satan get out of the way so God's word can come to pass the way he says it. There's a big difference there. Now let's look. Let's see what he says about Cyrus. And we're going to look at some things. On God creating evil, he creates light and darkness, he creates peace and calamity, or the King James Version says he creates evil. What does that mean? And how do we go about examining this and seeing really what God is talking about here? We're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of kings. Subdue the nations. Cyrus was a king that we're going to look at here, he didn't even know God. He had no idea. I will use you even though you have not known me. And we're going to see this explanation on how God rises nations. He brings them. He brings them into a rising. He raises them up. And the nations come to a certain level, even if they're not working for God. He can still bless them and use them for his glory and actually at the end of that depending on what he wants to do with that nation if they don't repent look at pharaoh look at egypt how egypt was used mightily by god god brought that into existence we see the babylonian captivity when the children of israel the hebrews were taken captive because of their disobedience they're walking away from god and this is what we need friends we've got to get to the point where we understand that God is in charge. And you think that because you live in America, you think we're so sarcastic here that God can't do anything because we said the name Jesus. Or we got this new way of doing church that all you have to do is just say Jesus Christ is Lord and no devil can touch you. No demonic force can come near you. And it's like a get to heaven free card. Like a little punch ticket. That you just, you walk up and you take that punch ticket and you put that punch ticket in and you, you punch in and it's got two little holes and then you punch out at the end of the day and you got your two little holes. By the way, if you like us, subscribe to us. <laughs> Give us a like on YouTube, please. Um, so what we have here is we have a, an arrogant group of people. And this is where I live in America. But in, even in the different nations, this new way of doing church is spreading. It's like wildfires. It's hotcakes, man. This is, this is a, a neat thing because we can do whatever we want and Jesus Christ is okay with it. And I've preached like crazy for the last two years. Just look in our archive section. You want to find out facts about the new way of doing church, the emergent church or the secret sensitive church system. Is it of God? Is it true? Is it real? Does God honor it? And we're going to look at that in detail at another day. Yeah, I've got a lot of lot of stuff below me here. And I want to just say, too, thank you for those that are watching this uh, from TBN. We're going to be on TBN again in the next couple days here, next week, actually, on September 9th, and then again on September 23rd. They've been calling us and asking us about the testimonies that we've seen and the things that are happening at Holy Fire International Church and, hey, Pastor, where is God? 
heypastorwhereisgod.com. If you want to talk to me, give me a, send me an email, glenn at heypastorwhereisgod.com. I want to hear from you, friends. And we just want to get our testimonies out there, the great things, the miraculous things that Jesus Christ is doing in our lives and in your life, right there in YouTube land, right there over Skype or over Google Hangout, whatever device you're watching this by, Jesus Christ is Lord, he is Savior, and he can heal you and he can touch your body right where you're at. And we begin to see this, and this is why TBN has become so interested, and they're, they're asking us now to give our testimonies on, on live broadcast on television. So look for us on TBN, and thank you for watching. Uh, that's a, it's a great program to uh, uh, support. So we're going to continue with this, though. Look at what is happening here. Cyrus is going to be used by God for these at least these four areas right here. So the first one, we'll let Tony read. Go ahead, and then I'm going to go uh, narrate as he goes. Go on. Middle, middle of one, to subdue nations before him mm -hmm. and to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. Now, he's talking about Cyrus here. He's talking to Cyrus. Cyrus is going to be used by the Lord to bring Israel back, or the Hebrews back, into Jerusalem. So he's got a, at least a fourfold purpose here, and you can see this in the prior chapters also. We're going to glean this real quick here. Cyrus is called by God. He's called to be a shepherd of the people, a, a shepherd to... Uh, subdue them or to be in, in charge of them for a period of time. So he's going to liberate the Jews. This is what his, he's anointed to do. He's called to open or the rebuilding of Jerusalem or declare it, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was torn down and, and the Jews now are uh, chastised and they're ready to come back in. They've been humbled and now it's time for revival. This is time for the church. Revival is going to be hitting the church again. We've been in a lot of dark times. We've been in a lot of falsehood where we've been seeing different things take place. And now we've got a lot of warnings. These, the end days, I believe, friends, are truly upon us. You can't get these blood moons uh, that are taking place, you know, beginning of September here. We've got that last blood moon coming right here in the mid-September. And the Bible talks about in the end days, the moon will turn to blood. It doesn't mean that they're going to be shooting some red dye or a bunch of red markers shooting up at the moon. You know, oh, NASA's going to figure something out. We're going to turn the moon blood and may, maybe turn it into green cheese or whatever it is that uh, they used to say years ago. Blue cheese or, you know, the man in the moon and all that other nonsense. But there has to be something that is a sign and a wonder, a sign for the nations. And this is why, friends, I truly believe we are living in the last days. And we need to get right with God. We need to live in righteousness again. And we're going to see what God demands here. He demands us of the people. But he's talking, he's going to use Cyrus. And when he uses Cyrus to do these things, to open the rebuilding of Jerusalem, to decree the reconstruction of the temple, get the temple back again, and put the nations under subjection to make sure that they're going to be rebuffed in the correct way and humbled before God. And Cyrus is powerful enough. God has raised him up and he's powerful enough to do this until the time period is over of him being used. And what we need to do, church, is we need to be under God's protection, under God's program to where God's not going to just use us and then put us aside. But we want to stay underneath his covering, truly underneath his covering, for the things that he deserves to be done in his name. Through the church, through these hands, through our hands, through your hands, through what we are seeing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, Cyrus, again, his, his, uh, his whole situation is, he, God is even going to tell him, he says, you, I'm going to use you even though you have not known me. So God will use the enemy. And you think that all, this, you know, all these things are happening at my church, and wow, look at the growth, and we've got all the fog machines, and we've got all the smoke in the mirrors, and, and, a, and a, a, a twaddle gospel, actually, a little uh, a gospel that's a sea, spot, run, and, and nothing else. We're supposed to bring pastors. We're supposed to bring people to another level. Not go down to where they're at and stay there. We're supposed to bring them up. My wife always said it's so easy to take someone and drag them off the table and pull them down onto the floor than it is to stand up on the table and pull somebody up onto the table to your level. And this is why we teach in such depth like this. We want to get you to another level, friends. We want you to graduate. We want you to get you to a place where you can receive what God and his son and the Holy Spirit have for you. 
here upon earth, not just in heaven, but here upon planet earth, we're supposed to live victorious. So how do we command God? What is this all about? We're going to see. Go ahead, Tom. Verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I have I'm named you. So in other words, there's been prophetic things that have been taking place. God had a plan for Cyrus for hundreds of years before Cyrus was even born. And, and this is what God has also. He's got a plan for the church, friends. He's got a plan for America and for revival, renewal, reformation, a, a insurgence of the power of God, the presence of a holy God to enter back into families, to enter back into the lives of a group of people that are wanting with all their heart to live for Jesus Christ, to get their families right again, to get their businesses right again to raise their children correctly and to say the right things to their friends and to their enemies, to decree God's word for the way it is. I, I've said this before that I love you enough, friends. You know, this is not a tough message. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And this might not be popular, but that's true love. It's to get the truth out there so you can live for Jesus Christ. Now we're going to see, he says, I, even though I, you have not known me, I'm going to use you. Go ahead. Verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. So check this out. I am the Lord, there is no other, right? There is no other God, what? There is no other God beside me. So he's in charge, whether you like it or not, whether we like it or not, whether the demonic forces, the fallen angels, Satan himself, whether they like it or not, God is in charge. There is no other creator, there is no other God that is stronger than him. So the question is, friends, whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the creator and, and you're going to follow his program or are you going to go along with the flow that is happening down here upon earth so you can get by and you can get away from all the struggles? We need to, we need to follow what God's word says. And we're going to see this into action. How do you command God? What is he saying here? What does this mean at the end of this teaching here? All the way in verse 10, 11, 12. What is this talking about? Go ahead. I will gird you, though you have not known me. Mm -hmm. Six that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. That who may know? These guys right here. Uh, these guys first and foremost, the Jews, the Hebrew children, that they may know, and then also the Gentiles, the nations. So the nations and the Jews will know that there is one Lord, there is one God, and he can bring you up, he can bring you down. He can create evil. He can create peace. He can create calamity. He can create, yeah, he can create anything. He can do whatever he wants, and it's his design. The question is, do you understand his design? Mark that one down, friends. If you're taking notes on this, the understanding, you've got to have understanding. Because if you don't have understanding, you'll get off track. You'll begin to do different things. You'll begin to de decree things and declare things and begin to command God in ways that he is not ready for and he does not sanction. This is why this is a tricky maneuver. And we've seen a lot of charismatic friends or people over the years that just, they speak all kinds of different things. They'll take God's word and they'll quote it out of context and they're just by memory. Memory verses one after another and they're all over the, they're all over the boat, man. They're, they're all over the road like a drunken truck driver. So we've got to get to the point where we understand. We have an understanding of where God is going. And this is what God is telling Isaiah about Cyrus. He's writing this and declaring that, Cyrus, I knew you before you were even born. I've had a plan for you. You're going to be a tool in my hands, and we're going we're gonna to have something come out of this that is good. And he begins to declare something about his, his sovereignty and his might and his power and his majestic ability to make the right decisions. This is God. Go ahead. Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I form the light and I create darkness. Now, this isn't something that uh, God has got a problem here, and this is a big test, and it's a set. It's, it's, a, it's a rigged game. This is some kind of rigged game, and, and God is uh, he's playing both sides. No, he doesn't play both sides. But what he does is he utilizes the things that Satan can do and, and, and what the enemy can do. He will utilize that and allow it to work for his good. It's going to be done anyway. Satan's going to do something. God is not going to change our free will. He can maneuver it to where we're chastised or we're doing things in accordance, according to his plan, regardless whether we like it or not. 
But God is not going to be moved from his plan. He's going to have his way. And the problem that we have in the church is we've been frustrating God's plan of our life to be living for him here on earth. And if we, once we get to start living for Jesus Christ, we get the righteousness and the salvation, we get that keyed in the right way, which we're going to find out how to do it. But we get that keyed in, the earth is going to open up, salvation is going to bring forth, and righteousness and salvation is designed from the Old Testament into the New Testament to govern the earth. And, and, and when you understand the program in this, you'll begin to understand what it means to command ye me. Because God desires for you to say his word back to him. Quote his word. you got to know what it says. Not just helter-skelter scriptures. But find out the context of what the Lord is trying to say here. In the Old Testament, into the New Testament. Put them both together. Find out the heartbeat of God. And when you can find that out, it's going to be done through prayer and fasting and reading the word of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you, friends. And when he does reveal it to you, you begin to see a manifest presence of God that you haven't seen probably in years. Some of you may have never seen it before. But the Lord wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to reveal his power and his presence to you. And what are you supposed to command him about? It's right about this concerning his sons and his work. Let's find out what he says. Go ahead. Again, seven, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create calamity. Wow, peace and calamity. Or like King James Version says, I create evil. So the Lord puts these things out there and he, he, he sets the stage for different things. Does God, does, does God uh, all of a sudden, like I said before, is he, is he playing this game that we don't know about? No, but he's got a stage that is set and we are players the question is, are you a player on his side or are you working against him on the other side? He knows, he's, he's, he knows by patterns what we're going to do. That's a, actually, you think about it, that's how Satan operates with us only. Is Satan can look at you, demonic forces can look at you, and they can figure out your patterns. That's how those psychics work. They look at your pattern on something, and then they can project what you're about to do next according to your likes, your dislikes. That's why they call them familiar spirits. They're around you. They're around your family. They've been, they've been in there in the atmosphere, and they can see these different things take place, and they're, they're looking at this, and they make these guesses, these educated guesses, if you want to call it. But only God, only God knows the end from the beginning. Only God knows the future, and he can put these things prophetically in here. And guess what, friends? When God says it, it has to happen. There's no maybe. It has to take place. And when we see all the prophetic signs and, and wonders and prophetic words that have taken place already. And we see yet another good portion, quarter, another quarter of the prophecies need to be fulfilled yet, but the other ones were all fulfilled already to the T. Then we have to look at and say, what is going on here and how do we get to the point where we can stay in God's position to where the, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to speak to us? Let's find out. Go ahead, Tom. I, the Lord, do all these things. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Okay, now you got to check this out. Look at the way this is written here. Rain down, you heavens, from above. So the righteousness comes from where? Your own works? Can righteousness come from your own doing? Absolutely not. Righteousness has to have a pattern for it. So it can only come from the heavens. It can only come from God himself. So rain down, oh, you heavens, the righteousness come down, the Holy Spirit come down, righteousness, and begin to convict our hearts and show us how to live. Show us the truth of God's word and how to live and to breathe and to have the, the, the fullness of the Godhead operating within our bodies. The fullness of the book of Acts. You want the book of Acts? It's coming, friends. It's going to take place. You're going to see a renewal of the church. You're going to begin to see miracle signs and wonders again begin to flow with inside the churches. It has to happen. When evil is abounding, the Spirit of God is going to that much stronger abound with inside of your life and with inside of your churches. So get out of these mega people-pleasing churches and get into a church that's going to allow you to hear the Word of God. Whether you like it or not, you're going to hear it because it's good for you. And righteousness comes from the Spirit of God as it's poured down upon the hearts of man. And then men make a, men and women make a choice with where they want where they want to go. Either you want to follow God's plan or you want to follow man's plan. And the smoke and the fog and all those nifty things that minister to your soulish realm. But let God connect with your spirit. 
That's why it says here, the heavens, the righteousness will come down from heaven. Keep going. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation. So the righteousness has to come from the heavens. It has to hit earth. And the earth, when it opens, salvation will be brought forth. Why? Friends, salvation is not for heaven. Salvation is for earth. Salvation is not for the angels. It's not for the fallen angels. It's not for the demons. It's not for the Trinity. It's not for the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not for the aliens in outer space or whatever other stuff you guys want to believe. It's for earth. So righteousness is poured down from the heavens upon earth. And then when it hits, when you get the understanding of what righteousness truly means, not just God understands, so we can remain in our sin. Absolutely not. Get the sin out of your life and let, let righteousness and truth abound in your heart. And when you begin to do that, yeah, you're going to fall short of it, friends. Sure you will. 1 John 1, 9, God's going to be there to forgive you for your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness when you do make mistakes. But don't live in that. Get out of it. Give me a call. I'll help you out. Glenn with two N's at heypastorwhereisgod.com. I want to hear from you. Now, now I'm running out of time. Keep, keep going. So, so verse 8, the heavens bring, bring down the righteousness. The earth opens up and brings forth salvation. And then what happens here? Go ahead. And let righteousness spring up together. Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, have created it. Verse 9, woe to him who strives with his maker. Okay, uh, so you got the heavens, which is righteousness. And you've got salvation. When you bring them both together, one has to come from heaven, has to come down, and salvation has to connect with it. So man connects with God's righteousness. It's got to be God's word. It's God's way to highway, friends. It's got to be God's word. Not these new way of doing church where the pastor says just everything's okay, do what you want, because God understands. Uh -uh. It's got to be God's way. So when the, when the heavens bring forth the righteousness and the earth will open up with salvation, you have righteousness and salvation will then be there to govern the earth. This is the purpose of how God has truly designed it. And Jesus Christ came to fulfill that in its fullness. He came to bring that to the surface, fulfill it, and now we're supposed to live in that. And I'm not, I'm not preaching Old Testament stuff to stay in that, friends. I'm taking you from the Old Testament into the New Testament. This is the true transition. This is what Jesus is looking for. This is what the, the apostles, this is what Jesus Christ, first of all, shed his blood for. And this is what the apostles and the different martyrs of the church, they live for this. And religion is an enemy of what we're teaching here today. Religion is an enemy of what we're teaching today. Because today, righteousness and salvation is not needed. All you need is Jesus. Just say the name. Go ahead. Verse 9, woe to him who strives with his maker. So don't argue with your maker. God's, God's got it. He's got it figured out. You don't. I don't have it all figured out. But we have God's word. And so we can rest assured that his word is true. So at least you know you're on the right side. Let the pot shards strive with the pot shards of the earth. So argue with the people on earth, but don't argue with your maker. Keep going. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or shall your handiwork say he has no hands? Verse 10, woe to him who says to his father, what are you begetting? Or to the woman, what have you brought forth? So we got some warnings that are coming forth. But God is going to reveal his truth and his plan to us when it comes to commanding him. What does that really mean? So don't argue with your maker. Argue with the people down here on earth. We're supposed to debate. We're supposed to go back and forth on this. And the Bible says, come, let us reason together. How are you going to actually get to the point where you know what's true? You can hear somebody speak something that is completely contrary to God's word, and you'll believe it. And people have even said to me, Pastor Glenn, you're really hard on the pastors, and we're not supposed to judge. Judge not lest you be judged. Well, if these pastors aren't preaching the word of God, if they're not preaching the truth again, and they're just leading you like the Pied Piper. They're leading you into the ocean. And they're taking your kids with these great kids programs. And they give you a gospel that's so watered down and it's meaningless, basically. And you can live the way you want without any conviction of sin. Push the Holy Spirit out of your life because yeah, we, don't, we don't want to worry about that. We just want to talk about nice things. Friends, you should walk out of your church feeling convicted. You should walk out of your church wanting to strive and live for Jesus Christ. And actually, you're supposed to go to church to declare to everybody what Jesus Christ has done for you in your life while you're living in righteousness and doing your best to strive for that here upon earth all the rest of the days of the week. 
So we're supposed to live in this constantly. Go ahead. Verse 11, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. Check this out. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and? And concerning the work of my hands, you command me. Verse 12. Read that again. Verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons. Ask me of things. This is what you're supposed to command. Command the enemy to get out of the way. This is the word of God. He's given it to you, friends. Utilize it. Take the word of God. Get away from these pansy preachers. Find somebody that can take you into some depth of the word of God, and you can find out what to stand on. Jesus Christ says that he is the healer. He has come to deliver you. He's come to set you free. It is his will to heal you. It is his will to deliver you. And you need to stand on that. And you need to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the word of God work for me. I'm doing my best to live for him. Friends, if that is you, you're going to stretch your hands with me in just a few, one minute. Just give me another minute to get through this. You're going to stretch your hands with me. We're going to pray for your freedom. We're going to pray for your deliverance. You're going to get right with God right here, right now. Right on this video, you're going to get right with the Lord and you're going to begin to live for him and Jesus Christ is going to invade your life. He's going to have it. He's going to give you a bad hair day. He's going to mess you up good and that's what we're going to pray for. You need, to, you need to have an experience with a living Jesus Christ. Not something that you parroted off of a stage from some pastor, but you need to ask Jesus Christ to inhabit your life and let the Holy Spirit be the center of attention that leads you to Jesus Christ. He'll always lead you to Jesus. Okay, let's, let's close with this. Command ye me concerning my sons and the work of my hands. That's what we have to do. Don't argue with your maker, but stand and declare his word back to him. Lord, you said this, and this is what we're expecting. Lord, you said this. That is praying. It's not complaining. God does, God does not want a bunch of sissy complainers. He wants you to stand in agreement and know what his word says and declare it back to him. And then he will show up, friends. We've seen it for Years, hundreds and hundreds of people have gotten healed. And they, they keep getting healed. I mean, miracles are happening today, friends. Let's finish up, go ahead. Verse 12, I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretched out the heavens, and all their host I have commanded. Stretch your hands out. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just thank you, Lord, for this teaching. Lord, you are the creator of the heavens. You created the heaven and the earth. You want righteousness to pour forth with salvation and for it to govern the earth. Lord, we are expected to make choices for you here. And it's not just about punch ticket to get to heaven, Lord. This is about serving you with everything that we have. We just ask you right now, Lord, to inhabit our life. Change us, Lord. Make us into the Christians that you want us to be. And use us. Use these hands. Stretch your hands forth, friends. Use these hands mightily in Jesus' name. And if there's any sickness that are, that, that's coming against you, any demonic forces that are bothering you in the mighty name of Jesus, we break its authority. We break its power right now. Declare it, friends. Declare his word. Declare the word of God back to him. Say, Father God, we just come before you. And Lord, forgive me for all this other nonsense that we've been doing. But Lord, we want to get right with you. We want to begin to live in righteousness and experience true salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Friends, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Give me a call. Write to me. We want to hear from you. God bless you. We'll see you next week.